that it was P. Diddy who shot you. Um, I mean, I think you even said it to, to the doctor that night, right? I said it immediately. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I've had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and have described it, you know, vehemently to all parties involved. This is his audio in the interview. He, they was asking him about his past over here. It opens wounds when you hear, you know, the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that, but I am relieved that people are saying what the truth is that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. With Diddy's latest lawsuit, more details of the rapper's troubling behavior are slowly unraveling, connecting him to other celebrities in his dubious deeds. However, these moguls didn't want any of their closed door activities to get exposed again, which is why fellow rapper Kanye West is in danger. Sean Diddy Combs has been facing several allegations relating to his lustful behavior, but the latest exposes many incidents that are going on in the industry. The music mogul was sued in federal court by the producer of his recent album, Love Album, Off the Grid. The producer, Rodney Jones, accused Diddy of sexually harassing, drugging, and threatening him over more than a year. Rodney stated in the lawsuit that he lived and traveled with Combs from September 2022 to November 2023, during which time he recorded hours of video and audio of Combs, his staff, and others engaging in serious illegal activity. In a 79-page lawsuit filed by a music producer who claims to have worked with and lived with Sean Combs for a period of time, alleges there were underage girls, hidden cameras, and sexual harassment at his home, all of which Combs denies. Among the allegations, are that Combs forced Jones to procure sex workers and pressured him to engage in unwelcome sex acts with them and others, and that Combs gave laced alcoholic beverages to people who attended parties at his homes. The lawsuit includes what it says are screenshots from gatherings hosted at Combs' homes that included underage girls and sex workers some of whom he said were provided drinks that had been laced with drugs at Combs' direction. The suit, filed in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, also names Combs' adult son, Justin, his chief of staff, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Haptamarium as defendants. It all started in August 2022, and since then, Jones' life has been detrimentally impacted. Hello everyone, um, until further notice I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and Jones alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived with him at Combs' homes in Florida, Los Angeles, and New York, as well as on a yacht Combs rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The harassment and assault included constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus. Jones says he was forced to work in Combs' bathroom as Combs showered naked in a glass enclosure, according to the lawsuit. When he raised concerns about the behavior to Corum, Combs' chief of staff, she dismissed them as friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. The lawsuit accuses Coram of aiding and abetting Combs' sexual assault of Jones and of working with Combs to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship. Jones also alleges that he was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts with them to please Combs. To aid in the alleged recruitment, Jones said, Combs provided him with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to a Miami establishment as a signal to any sex worker he approached that Combs was in town and had sent Jones to recruit them. Jones alleges Combs, whom he describes in the suit as forceful and demanding and someone who does not take no for an answer, leveraged his power as one of the most influential people in hip-hop and business to intimidate him, including by threatening to inflict bodily harm if Jones did not comply with his demands. On one occasion, Jones alleges, Combs forced him to watch as he displayed guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. In a separate incident, Jones alleges, Combs shared that he was responsible for a shooting in a nightclub in New York City in 1999 with the rapper Shine, born Jamal Barrow. That it was P. Diddy 
who shot you. Um, I mean, I think you even said it to, to the doctor that night, right? I said it immediately. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I've had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and have described it, you know, vehemently to all parties involved. A jury acquitted Combs of gun possession and bribery charges in connection with that incident, while Barrow was sentenced to 10 years in jail. Jones was terrified of Combs and felt he could not tell him no, according to the suit. This is his audio and interview. He, they was asking him about his past over here. It opens wounds when you hear, you know, the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that, but I am relieved that people are saying what the truth is, that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement the lawsuit says. Jones says in the lawsuit that he has video and audio evidence to support some of the allegations. The lawsuit says that Combs required Jones to record him constantly, and that on several occasions, Combs took Jones's cell phone to record himself. As a result, Jones alleges he has hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings of Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Jones says in the suit that he believes Combs also drugged him on February 2, 2023. He alleges he woke up naked, dizzy, and confused in bed with Combs and two sex workers. Jones added that he was under an implied work-for-hire agreement and was not compensated for the songs he produced on The Love Album. As a result, the lawsuit says Combs, Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group were all unjustly enriched at his expense. The labels did not immediately respond to requests for comment. In response to this lawsuit that shook the industry and confirmed many speculations, representatives for Justin Combs said that he categorically denied all allegations since they were a absurd. They are all lies. This is a clear example of a desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday, the statement said. There will be legal consequences for all defamatory statements made about the Combs family. These damning allegations have made fans and industry insiders buzzing about rumors that Diddy has stolen money and taken advantage of artists on his Bad Boy Records label. A good example is Ma Dollar E who accused Combs of ripping him off along with others signed to his label. I heard you loud and clear when you said that you are now for the artist, and to that, my response is that if you want to see change, you can make a change today by starting with yourself. Mace posted on Instagram. Your past business practices knowingly have been extremely unfair to the very same artist that helped you obtain that Icon Award on the iconic Bad Boy label. Not only that, Mace seems to have charged Diddy with continuing to withhold his public rights from more than 20 years ago, sharing a tweet that brought attention to the situation of young artists who sign unjust contracts with Diddy and get trapped in an endless cycle of abuse and freak-offs with the rapper. Ma Dollar E didn't end it there. He appeared on an episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast and spoke candidly about his ongoing issues with music moguls. While speaking with co-hosts Gilly Darking and Wallow, the rapper turned pastor delved into where the bad blood between them began. More than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Cause you said felt like okay, feeling. Okay, let's clear that up then. You saying you feeling that. No, we gonna you... keep it with, I'm, cause I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff. After appearing on multiple commercial hits from Bad Boy Records, Mardola E says he was the label's chief songwriter in the wake of the notorious Big's death, whereas Diddy simply orchestrated which artists would record which parts of the songs. Me to grow at anything. And, and to anybody, is that gonna bother you? Yeah. Especially Absolutely. if I'm producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party and I would be in the studio writing the records and then I'd just come back and say, he'll say this is his part or that is his part. But I was the person there creating it all. Right. In the end, he felt that he wasn't given what he deserved, just like Rodney. I came up with the beat too. And I said, Stevie, we need to do this beat and do it like this. So just imagine all of these moments that are taken from you, the, the, the records, the beats, you ain't getting the money. 
You publishing. ain't getting the publishing. You ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. Combs, however, responded to this during an interview with The Breakfast Club. The first of all, the first of all is, is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true mm -hmm. and has really stained, tried to stain, stain my legacy. He later made it known that the- If you think that I'm a scumbag that would ever steal anything, my name is Diddy, Sean Combs. I never took nothing from nobody a day in my life. All I've ever given is is opportunity and 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 more money than a person was making. Although Diddy vehemently denied the allegations, the controversy surrounding his business practices refuses to die down. The FBI and rap rival 50 Cent have both accused him of taking out numerous artists to profit from their work, most especially with the help of fellow musician Jay-Z. One name that always comes up when discussing Diddy and Jay's alleged misdeeds is the iconic rapper Coolio. Could there be some truth to these rumors? It's a juicy topic that has fans and insiders alike on the edge of their seats. According to TMZ, Coolio went to a friend's house in Los Angeles when he went to the bathroom. When he did not return for a long time, the friend went to check and found Coolio lying on the floor. Paramedics were called in, and the rapper was found dead at the scene. He was 59 years old at the time. Breaking news, TMZ is reporting that rapper Coolio, the man behind the song Gangster's Paradise, has died. The rapper, who achieved enormous success in the 90s, was allegedly visiting a friend this afternoon in LA when he passed away. His longtime manager telling TMZ that he went to the bathroom at his friend's house, but when he did not come out after a while, the friend kept calling for him and eventually went in and found Coolio laying on the floor. EMTs were called and he was pronounced dead at the scene. The artist's manager said Coolio may have suffered a cardiac arrest, leading to his sudden death. Police said there were no drugs or equipment, such as needles, at the scene. Although there's no official cause of his death, the world of conspiracy theorists came up with a controversial topic with the Illuminati at the center of discussion. Believed to be a secret society with the power to control world events for a long time, the Illuminati have been the subject of endless speculation and rumors. I don't want to say political power, but the amount of social power that I, that I was able to achieve. You would think that I would be a prime candidate for This for this just to be so we could say we could call it something for to be a member of the Illuminati or a member of the elite society or whatever. You would think that I would be that they would come at me, and I, I think they did it sideways though. But the latest theory takes things to a whole new level, suggesting that Jay Z, the legendary rapper and music mogul, is a member of this shadowy group and that he may have been involved in the supposed sacrifice of 90s rap icon Coolio. Yes, you heard that right. According to this wild conspiracy theory, Coolio, the creator of the iconic hit Gangster's Paradise, was the victim of the Illuminati's sinister plot, and Jay-Z may have played a role in his demise. But what evidence is there to support such a bizarre claim? This could be it. I never, nobody never got at me directly and said, we want you to join us and we're doing this. That's never happened. But I will tell you, I've had motherfuckers come at me on some weirdo shit, like on some gay shit. I've had motherfuckers come at me on some, oh, you should do this type shit. And I was like, wow, what? Man, what the, why the fuck would I do that? Coolio's career took off with the release of his debut album and the lead single, Fantastic Voyage, climbed to number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. A year later, he topped the solo rap charts with Gangster's Paradise. In 1996, he garnered six Grammy Award nominations for the same song and won the Best Rap Solo Performance Award. Regrettably, the rapper has passed away, and rumors have emerged that Diddy and Jay-Z may have played a role in his demise. In a 2016 interview with Uproxx, Coolio reflected on the legacy he wished to leave behind. He expressed a desire to be remembered as an intelligent and cool person who always sought to educate others and make them better people. He believed that it was more important to leave behind a positive impact on people's lives than to be remembered solely for his music, cooking, 
or film work. The sudden loss of such a talented individual who had so much to offer the world is deeply tragic. However, the surprising part is that Coolio was fearing for his life, claiming he had seen things that would lead to his demise. There were some things that I was trying to do that I felt were important, things that I, that I felt would help other people. Shit started happening to me. Went to jail for some bullshit. Mm. Got convicted. Well, not necessarily convicted, but because I, I didn't do no time, no real time, but little shit started happening. This was after the rapper suggested that he planned to expose the music industry and those who had profited from it. I'm at a point right now in my life where there's a lot of shit I know that I want to tell people. It's a lot of things that I want to teach, but I'm afraid. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm scared because I, I got four grandchildren. And I got I got and I got I got children that are in this world. I got people I care about. Jay-Z has been the subject of various rumors, ranging from establishing a new world order to using music videos and dance moves to brainwash the masses to participate in human sacrifices. Some believe that he and Diddy were responsible for Coolio's death because he was planning to expose their alleged involvement in the Illuminati. If that wasn't enough, another well-known figure in the music industry, Biggie Smalls, also known as Notorious Big, was also their victim. My man, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G. What up, what up, what up? Himself. What's up, dog? What's happening? Finally, we finally get to sit here All and right. kick it on my junk. It's my man right here, too. All love, stay bump ahead. The untimely death of the renowned rap icon, Notorious Big has long remained a mystery, but now the stakes seem to have changed, as some famous individuals are accusing fellow rap legends, Jay-Z and Diddy, of being involved in the crime. You would get 100 people in the room, and out of the 100 people, probably three would say, it was all right for Big to be in LA. 97, 97% of those people would say he had no business in LA at that time. We all knew that. Despite being the founders of Rockefeller and Bad Boy Records, they remain the prime suspects, with solid evidence supporting these claims. According to sources close to the slain rapper, Biggie was obstructing Diddy's plan all along and he wanted him killed. You know Pac just got killed. It ain't no kind of business Big was doing. Big, Big couldn't even walk, he couldn't run. They was pushing him around in a wheelchair, brother. Why the hell would you rent studio time in at LA for him to finish your album when in fact you got your own studio at daddy's house? Let's keep it a buck, let's stop this bullshit, man. Unfortunately, we cannot change the fact that Biggie later got killed. Deal, who was previously Diddy's bodyguard, is well acquainted with him and has witnessed his ruthless pursuit of his goals, which is pure evil. He treats everybody like crap. Even Biggie's fans believe that Diddy was responsible for his mysterious death. Jaguar Wright, a music industry veteran, also made accusations similar to those made against Diddy. It is crucial to pay attention to what she has to say about the matter. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he... Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning is so gone. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. It is widely known that Diddy extensively used Biggie's money and Jaguar's allegations should not be dismissed lightly, particularly given her history of upholding the law. Therefore, we can rely on her statements. Jaguar's supporters are also rallying behind her and expressing their support by placing their trust in her words. Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, also expressed her belief that her son was sacrificed. In a heartbreaking interview with the Daily Mail, she spoke about the emotional pain she experiences every day, knowing that she will never see her son again and that the person responsible for his death has not been held accountable. She believes that the culprit is still out there, possibly even pretending to be her friend. She shared her thoughts in an emotional statement, saying, I have a very good idea who murdered Christopher, and I genuinely believe that the LAPD know exactly who did too. They've done their investigation, but they just refuse to move forward. I don't know why they haven't arrested the person the person who was involved. It seems to me that it's one giant conspiracy, and someone is being protected somewhere down the line. Now, the tide has turned on Kanye West, 
Diddy was reportedly seen at Rolling Loud LA a couple of weeks ago, but the highlight is Kanye West ignoring the bad boy entertainment leader. TMZ reported that Ye curved Puff at the annual showcase while he was trying to chop it up with Kanye, but the gold digger singer didn't want that to happen. Diddy wanted a word with Kanye West at an LA concert this month, but Ye ended up ducking the convo, which is interesting, considering what's gone down in the bad boy mogul's world since then. Sources with direct knowledge tell that Diddy was hanging out backstage at Rolling Loud in Los Angeles a couple weeks ago. Sources told the outlet that the bad boy entertainment head Honcho was hanging out backstage at Rolling Loud with his entourage to check out Kanye's performance. He was even seen in videos watching Ye's performance with his son, Justin Combs. Diddy also reportedly told people close to him that he wanted to speak to Ye personally. But as for Kanye, when the idea of meeting with Diddy was brought to his attention, Ye avoided the meetup altogether. Although the reason behind Kanye dodging a conversation with Diddy wasn't disclosed, however, back in 2022, Ye and Puff did have a bit of a feud, after Puff publicly expressed his disapproval of Ye's White Loves Matter shirts, which were worn at Kanye's YZY SZN9 show. Kanye later declared war against Diddy, sharing text conversations between them on social media. I didn't like our conversation, one of Ye's texts read in part. I'm selling these tees, nobody can get in between me and my money, never call me with bullshit like that again, unless you are ready to greenlight me because anybody that got on that T is me. Ye offered a harsh response to Diddy's request, calling him a fed. Could this statement mean Diddy is up to something that only Kanye knew? That might be the answer because Kanye exposed Diddy in previously deleted footage that internet users tried to dig up after Diddy's home was raided following Rodney Jones's lawsuit. Before that, he made mention of Diddy here. In the clip, which was discovered from a previous Drink Chumps interview, Kanye talked about a deal certain celebrities have made to stay out of prison. The interview from October 2022 saw Ye claim certain celebrities are fed and make deals with law enforcement that would allow them to stay out of jail if they blackmailed others around them. The resurfaced outburst included Diddy, with Ye referring to the star by his previous name, Puff Daddy. In the blast, the rapper fumed, the reason why you gotta talk is because you did a deal, you f asterisk 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 g fed, that's why you've got to come at me, because part of the deal for you to be able to do all that and get out of jail is that you promised that you were going to go pull my card. Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas, all you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on, okay. all you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll get fuck who, cause you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks cause you did a deal, you fucking fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you gotta come at me, cause part of the deal. So Diddy might think Yeah knows more than that, which is why he tries to meet with him, which could lead to his death, like several other artists who try to expose the truth. While we expected more secrets of the entertainment industry to get exposed, those big guns didn't want that, which is why they eliminated anyone they could. Will you prove them wrong? Let's look on.